What is up, guys? It is Rami Noodles here, and today I wanted to highlight the importance of the appear offline option. All you have to do is type in slash add friend a space appear offline, no spaces between appear and offline. Uh, it makes you have to uh, take fights. Before we had a, uh, a problem with friends list uh, showing everybody online, so we would just throw it on an alt, and we'd be able to see everybody who's online. Same thing Imperials did, Rebels did it. Everybody was doing it, and uh, it would allow you to count the enemy's numbers before you actually went out to fight, which was killing PvP. It was really very harmful to PvP. So now we have the appear offline option, and you have to take fights with unknowns. Like, you don't know who you're going to fight necessarily. You don't know who all is going to show up, and you just have to uh, man up and uh, do it. Uh, you know, scared money don't make money, and I'm pretty sure that's what the Bible says. So... Here's our clip. All right, here we are getting off to a rough start. As you can see, food stamps is in the window, getting PD'd and KD'd, and we lose him right off the bat. He is our only CM for this fight, while we focus Lightning Dance, who is the CM for the Imperials. And then we're fighting. Uh, what happened was I looked back at the footage. Lunatic took some damage. He did a total heal on himself, and then within the three-second cooldown that it took Lunatic to try and heal food stamps, uh, the Imperials ended up killing food stamps so fast, so props to Imperials for doing that. That was a very fine execution. However, it is 12v14. <clears throat> we don't have the uh, appear, we have the appear offline option, so we don't know exactly how many we were running into. They were all in the house that's nearby this base. They all came out once we rushed onto that turret that you can see Luna Ray is on. Luna Ray is our only swordsman uh, for this fight, and she's taking out that turret. The turret acts as like a whole other player. They can chunk Jedi and hurt force bars pretty good, and they never miss, so it's a solid, uh, it's like a big hit every two seconds. So it's really, really rough. We keep on Lightning Dance, almost killing him here, but not quite doing enough. The Jedi healers on the other side, on the on the Imperial side, are very, very uh, on top of things. They got Dolody, they got Solid, I think they got a couple others. We lose Oathkeeper. The whole thing about Oathkeeper is he's a stacker. He did not get stated except for Intimidate, which you cannot resist. So Oathkeeper goes down. <clears throat> he's a, uh, I think he's a Fencer Rifleman. We keep on uh, Lightning Dance as best we can. Uh, Luna Ray goes down and she dies. That's unfortunate because that's a swordsman with a big hammer. So that's DPS lacking. Uh, Sliffer starts taking some damage, but I don't think he goes down here. We're staying on Lightning Dance. The best option sometimes is to stick on one single target. I'm actually surprised he didn't run inside the base to peel for himself. That would have done a really good job because getting the bases or kill, like getting the NPCs from inside that base to get on top of us would have been a huge advantage in their favor. We already have their ATST pets on us, which are also kind of like another player. They don't really miss and they always hit and they do pretty decent damage. <clears throat> so those are really annoying to deal with as a rebel player against when you're playing against Imperials. So we just keep on Lightning Dance. People are taking damage across the board, uh, especially with the poisons that Lightning Dance has been throwing out. It's pretty rough. Uh, we've got Vitality in the back there throwing out uh, grenades and shooting a uh, flamethrower. Uh, I've never, I don't know if the flamethrower is any kind of effective, but I know the grenades do big damage to Jedi. I call Divum as a target because I see his mind is low, but my team thinks otherwise. They call Vitality, and they actually ended up downing Vitality pretty quickly. It was actually pretty remarkable. That was a very fast kill. I was actually surprised we got that. I had heard someone say that, <clears throat> that uh, a couple of the healers went inside the base to in-cap because they were so dotted up. Uh, we do have people spinning fires. Ender goes down. Surprisingly, Ender doesn't die here. I think I, I KD'd Davin and he was gonna DB him, but he couldn't because of the five second delay. And uh, I just, at this point, I'm just calling for Davin. Davin is actually really good at staying alive in this fight. It's uh, pretty remarkable. Did a lot better than I expected him to, so he's doing a good job. <clears throat> Ardius is our, uh, our Intim guy. He does a lot of force Intim, and he was doing a good job, but he's on his back now having to heal himself, and we, you know, he's not able to get up for whatever reason, and uh, he eventually goes down. Ender also dies, and then Ardius, <laughs> Ardius unfortunately, uh, he he goes down, and it's, un it's, just a, it's just a mess. We figured at this point that we had lost, and we just wanted to stay in it and see how many, um, how many kills we could get. Um, we actually kind of figured it was over when food stamps died because that's our only combat medic. And combat medic is one, a lot of pressure, and two, a lot of pressure relief. The dots are big pressure and the healing is big pressure relief. And you can see a lot of our people who have died have died to health. And that is what 
is good, like CM is very good at fixing in an AoE. Our squad leader now is under attack, Pew Pew Yu. Uh, he's actually pretty decent, but uh, he's just taking too much pressure. We don't really have, uh, we don't, we lost. Well, Lunatic is, I guess, around, but it's, it's, I don't know how much longer he can keep him up. We do lose Pew Pew eventually, though. They stick on Pew Pew pretty hard. I'm not sure if Davin was the right target. I don't think I would call Davin again because he is so good at just staying away and trying to get away. You know, I think we probably ran out his entire force bar trying to kill him. Uh, which is fine, but um, if he's going to be such a difficult target, I'm not going to prioritize him. I might have chose like a master healer or somebody like that um, next time, like Dolity or maybe Solid or something. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, that's kind of the fight. We lost Pew Pew. Uh, Lunatic goes down. Me and Madhead and Moser are alive. Slipper's going down. Um, we were just trying. I was trying to get on Idawan here. I don't think we get Idawan though. Unfortunate. They did such a good job of staying on targets over here uh, on the imp side. They did like a really good job, and then we we had to run away. But it was a good fight. I'm actually impressed with the Imperials on that one. Um, but this just kind of shows the idea of uh, pure offline and how good that is. A pure offline is honestly one of the best things that were added to the game. We would have never gone out there to fight if not for the fact that we could see the friends list and see, oh, they've got 15. You know, having 15 players is, you know, it's significant. It's not insignificant. And, uh, and you know, people in this game generally do not have a suicide wish. There's not like a whole lot of RNG. There's not like some crazy clump you can do and then like meteor strike people out of the sky, you know, like you could do in maybe Albion Online or some other game. So because of that, you know, we just, we, we just have to kind of go out, you know, no fear. And uh, I really enjoy that aspect, and I'm really glad that feature's in. Anyways, uh, if you guys like the video, go ahead and like it. If you don't like it, dislike it, and uh, leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. And uh, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you all next time. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Peace.